Hi, I'm Eric Johnson, Dean of Vanderbilt's Owen Graduate School of Management. And this week we're hosting Informs Healthcare here in Nashville. And today uh, we had the great pleasure of having Jonathan Perlin here today. He is the President of Clinical Services and Chief Medical Officer of HCA, and also an adjunct faculty member at Vanderbilt. It's so great to have you here today, Jonathan. Eric, it's terrific to be here with you, thank you. So we've been talking at the conference a lot about big data and analytics and, and all of these uh, topics. And one of the things that's notable about HCA is just its scale, the, the, the big scale that you have there and the ability to create a learning health system with that. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, really the concept of a learning health system is the idea of creating data as a natural byproduct of the care we're privileged to provide and then committing to using that data to inform and improve future care. And the great thing about scale is the ability to answer big questions with big data. Uh, and so um, you can get to questions that um, couldn't be answered otherwise. You know, our traditional model has been to do a study of a patient with heart failure or a study of a patient with diabetes. But in the real world, we have to contemplate diabetes and heart failure. And we can use our data assets to see what works best to improve care for those patients in the real world. We call that mode of research pragmatic research uh, because it's really done as a byproduct of the normal processes, not necessarily as a separate um, research setup, uh, but really a separate analytic opportunity uh, that has very real world implications and we believe generalizes by virtue of how those data are created. So with the enormous amount of data that HCA creates, where do you see the real opportunities for analytics? Yeah, well, just on, a note on the size of the data. We did a little calculation. We think that the Library of Congress has about 10 terabytes uh, of data. That would be about the size of Pluto. And we think Google has about 15 exabytes of data. That's about the size of the sun. We're there at about 18 petabytes, and um, roughly proportionate, we have about Jupiter. So we think we can really answer big questions uh, very quickly with the big data. I'll give you an example. Um, we recently completed a study called Reduce MRSA. It compared three approaches to reducing this potentially life-threatening, highly drug-resistant infection. Screening patients and isolating them, screening, isolating, uh, and treating, or treating everybody on their admission to the intensive care unit. It's a 75,000 patient study. And it turned out that the third approach, called universal decolonization, not only on top of all other best practices, cut bloodstream infections by nearly half on top of already good performance, wow. but we got to the answer, not in 18 years, and we talk about the gap of bench to bedside of being 17 years, but in 18 months. You know, I love the fact we got to it in 18 months, but I'm really looking forward to us getting to that in 18 minutes by using the data that are created as a byproduct of care and running that experiment in computers, in silica, and I think that's the future. Well, many times when we talk about this data, folks will raise the issue of privacy and security and, and call it a barrier uh, to doing a lot of this great work. And I've heard you say it's an opportunity. Well, what's the opportunity? Yeah, you know, um, when I first started out, I used to think of privacy and security as necessary hurdles to jump over, as constraints. But I had the great privilege of chairing the United States Health IT Standards Committee. And really, I learned the lesson that if we do well in, ter in terms of providing appropriate protections of privacy and security, we create not barriers, but we create a trust fabric. We create the kind of environment that you and I enjoy when we use our ATM card. You know, we know that it's never gonna be 100% perfect, though honestly, we've never really had an, an issue. But we value the utility of using that ATM card uh, and um, consider the privacy and security sufficient for that. Patients, particularly patients who have advanced disease or patients who are, are older, they really want to make sure that they can be advantaged by all that we could know and all that we can know to inform their care in particular. And so when we create the sort of privacy and security safeguards that give people enough comfort to participate, it creates a fabric in which a new commerce of health information can inform and improve care. And I think that's pretty exciting. That's neat. That's neat. Well, one of the great joys of my job is that we have a, a number of executives that visit us every year and uh, speak to our students and, uh, like yourself, speak at conferences that we're participating in. And uh, I always like to ask them to share a leadership lesson uh, in their own journey, uh, in their corporate en endeavor. So I wondered if you could share one for us. Well, I I've been so blessed by, by many privileges. And, um, you know, this is a story or a lesson about opportunity. Uh, when I have the 
privilege of, of working with students, and that's why I love being a part of the Vanderbilt family and, and, and mentoring. My advice is just say yes. I know there's an old saying of just say no. What do I mean by just say yes? It's that if someone asks you, you want to give this a shot to be on this committee or take this project, I know there may be many pulls on your time, but each one of those potential opportunities, if you say yes, opens a door to another opportunity. I never imagined when I was a resident that within a decade, I'd be leading the Veterans Health Administration as undersecretary. But the opportunity of saying yes created other subsequent opportunities. And if you decline those opportunities, people may say not interested or other ideas. I'm not saying, you know, don't do things you can't do, but really give yourself the chance to create your own opportunities and open those doors. Well, Jonathan, thanks so much for spending the time with us today. Eric, it's been a privilege. Thank yeah. you very much for your leadership. And thanks for the great work of, of, of the school.